John Fun is a columnist for National Review, co-author of Who's Counting. All right, you said to me during commercial break, can you imagine the private briefings that Feinstein and Rogers got that led them to these statements today? Well, the public knowledge we have is that in late September, just before the website was going to go up, the Inspector General and other security people at HHS wrote a memo saying there is a high risk that this will not be secure for people's private data and if we don't do something, it could be a major scandal. And that was ignored. The website had to go up. What really worries me about what Senator Feinstein said is the president's chief of staff presented with this awful problem of cybersecurity, people's personal data available to hackers, uh, the navigators who are a separate issue, and the response is we have to keep the website going. I think that's a political imperative not an imperative to help the American people. But what helped the American people is to get this done right. It would obviously embarrass the Obama administration so much to take the site down, they right. refuse to discuss it. But the longer it stays up, the harder it is to fix it. It's so hard to fix something if it's going 70 miles an hour. So to avoid embarrassment politically, they decided, oh, we'll just put Americans at risk, which invites my question, how at risk are Americans by going on to this website? The former administrator of Social Security, uh, he only resigned last February, worked for Barack Obama for till then, said there are predators out there, both hackers and navigators, these people who are supposedly designed right. to help people access the system, who could literally steal people's data and sell it so that they could create mischief. The problem with the navigators, Greg, there are no federal background checks for criminal behavior on these So people. they could have hired known thieves and criminals, and we they have know. no idea. Nobody would have any idea. When we did the census in 2010, we did criminal background checks on the people who went door-to-door -door counting people. Right. We're not doing criminal background checks on people who have access to the federal data hub and the most private information of them, the American people. You know, the, the other thing I learned from watching Sebelius's testimony and others, they never bothered to put encryption codes in the very beginning, which is where you must structurally put that in order to protect the identity of Americans logging on. And I've talked to a couple of experts who say you can't backload that stuff. It has to exactly. be done in the beginning. Look, somebody in North Carolina, the Heritage Foundation, talked to this fellow. Last Thursday, he, tried, he finally got into the website to fill out his application. What bounced back at him were two letters that HHS had sent to people in South Carolina talking about their eligibility, right. including personal information. So he just logged on and he got information that was private from other people. And he said, if this can happen to me, what's being done with my data? Yeah. And I heard somebody in the administration say, well, we're unaware of anybody who's been hacked or had their identity stolen. Well, this... <laughs> This is just the beginning. It takes a while well, to find out that you've been hacked. This fellow from North Carolina has been trying to contact HHS for four days. Right. Can't get through, no response. Of course they don't know who's been hacked. You can't reach them. <laughs> They're probably in the back room fiddling with the website. Right. Um, you wouldn't go on this website, would you? Consumer Reports, the nation's leading consumer magazine, says stay away. Yeah. If they say it, that's good enough for me. I, I, you mentioned something to me last week when we were talking about this, that among the navigators, and these are the people who have been hired, no background checks, they could be criminals for all we know, among the navigators are folks connected to ACORN? The founder of ACORN, Wade Rathke, ACORN of course has now gone bankrupt, has gone back and started a new group in New Orleans, and this new community organizing group has navigators working in 17 states helping people with their health right. insurance. Now, Mr. Rathke is free to do that, but he didn't do a good job hiring people when he was running ACORN. Right. Um, the talk shows were consumed today by the president's uh, broken promise, which is now implicitly admitted by the president himself that, yes, um, you cannot keep your health care plan if you like it. First, it was tens of thousands out in California. Now it's 100,000 in various states, and you add it all up, and we're talking about millions and millions of people. This is only the individual marketplace. This doesn't even begin to count the, the employers who are going to begin to drop plans. Right, because they're unaffordable or they can't work out the arrangements. I had dinner last week in Arizona with two people. Both of them had gotten letters from their employer saying, we're going to have to change your policy and dramatically scale it back, or we may even have to drop you. Yeah. John Fun, thank you very Pleasure. much. Pleasure.